Hey, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on some tutorials. Today I'm working on the Marshmallow Crochet Scarf. It's a very cool striped scarf with no color changes because we're using a color changing yarn. And you can use Karen with the Karen Cakes or you can use Premier Yarns with the new Sweet Rolls. So we'll get started on that. Also, I will be filming another tutorial as well. Hey, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. Today I'm your host. Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today I'm working on a marshmallow crochet baby prop. It is a mat for playing on the floor. It's a big old cloud. You can use it as a mat or you can use it as a baby prop. So it'll be really cute for a little bedroom in front of where you change and stuff. It's a nice squishy footed thing to sit on or stand on, whatever. You can make a big giant one if you want to as well. So we'll get started. All right, hey everyone, welcome to live, welcome to replay. I was filming some of my beginning tutorial stuff, so you can kind of see that. I am crunched for time, as you know, because I am going on a mission trip tomorrow, so I have to uh, pack up. Today is packing day, and I was like, you know what, I need to get some film stuff out of the way and get those sort of in the can, and I might be able to edit them on my way or um, at some point today, so I'm gonna try and do everything that I can to get things ready. Um, so it'll be good. Um, welcome again. If you're on catching me on the replay, be sure and write replay and ask your question. I will address it next week on Thursday. And if you are catching me live, I love to see um, where you're from. I'll give a shout out and then I'll start into my tutorials. So thank you so much for joining me again. I'm going to be using footage from this for films, uh, uh, for my, my uh, filming for my tutorials. And I am noticing I've got to adjust my camera. Hold on. I have to slide that. I'm not sure if that was obstructing my sound, but can you guys hear me better? Does it sound better or worse? <laughs> better or the same? So welcome everyone. I see a couple of people in the UK are popping on. Good evening to you. I think it's evening for you. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. I see Istanbul. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, wow. We've got so... I feel so international today. <laughs> hey, Marcia in New York. We got our South Jersey girl, Ellie. Hello, hello. Uh, let me scroll through and say hello to everyone. Bridget, you're my first commenter. Love it. Hey, Ellie and Ada and Joanne. Good morning. Um, Joanne is one of the new admins in the Good Knit Kisses Loom Knit and Craft Club group. By the way... We have about 70 people who are waiting <laughs> to get into the group and be approved. We do comb through those um, and make sure. Um, but uh, yeah, just recently added Joanne. I'm kind of waiting until after my mission trip to add people in because um, if, I, if we added them before I leave, then if there's any issues, then it's kind of hard for me to help address it. So anyway, um, so I think they're giving me a bit of a moment. Um, if you, if you message one of the admins, um, they can also, um, maybe expedite it if you know them from somewhere or whatever. Good morning, Crystal, Lori, Stacy. Morning, Lynn, Lydia. Hey, Stacy, Esther, Stephanie, Kathy, Nahel, Nah, Nahel? I'm not sure. You're from Istanbul. I'm probably going to say it wrong. Naditha in Qatar, Marcia in New York. And Sue Ford in the UK, and Patty, Ellie, Naditha, thank you, yeah. Um, Lydia, thank you. Nancy, I'm repeating some. <laughs> Patty's in Indiana. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Marcia, Ellie says don't rush. It can all wait till next week, yeah. Um, I think I saw on there something about um, clips from the trip. You know, I'm normally inclined to do clips from a trip, um, but on this one, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to do that unless I'm asked to and it's like completely appropriate because the type of trip it's on is very sensitive. So, um, I might film, uh, maybe some reactions from some of the people that I'm with and put something together later. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I'm just kind of winging it because I want to be sensitive to what's happening. So, um, anyway, um, 
Thank you for asking though. I'm glad you're interested. So I leave tomorrow and uh, very early in the morning and then I'll get back very late on Sunday night. So if anyone would like to pray for our safety, that would be wonderful. We're going to be going into um, 15 passenger vans and I'm actually a backup driver. <laughs> so normally when I go on a long car trip, I sit there and I might actually <laughs> edit videos. I know it sounds funny. I might edit videos or I might crochet or knit or whatever, but I'm bringing so much knitting and crochet along with me that's already done. I'm not really going to have room for much more. And, um, I'm really, I think I'm just going to be chatting with, um, all the women. So it's going to be good. Anyway, all right, I'm going to get started. Um, welcome everyone. And, um, you're going to see me if I mess up, I may mess up. I might speak to you guys. Um, sometimes I can see the comments, but when I turn it to do a tutorial, it's kind of hard. So I'm actually kind of nervous this morning. I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really sure why. Um, I've been putting this off and so I like to do it when it's fresh in my brain, but I've been kind of putting it off because I had so many things that I did all at the same time. So anyway, you see, I don't have my earbud on today. You'll have to tell me if sound is good. Um, I usually put that in, but we have one less person in the house right now. And um, anyway, yeah, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about that extra sound, but I do have another person in here too, still. So <laughs> anyway, all right, well, I'm gonna get started. Let me flip the camera down here. You gotta see my ceiling for a second because I have some other stuff behind it I don't wanna showcase, hold on. Okay. adjust I'm getting my pattern out it's on my other email it's on my other device bear with me okay <sighs> Hopefully I do a good job. <laughs> okay. I'm not as prepared this morning, so sorry. Um, two plus three. And this is a... Hold on. Show... Hundred and forty one. Okay. Hang on, I'm sorry. I thought I had what I needed. Um so sorry. Okay. Which one is this? This is lemon lime. Hello, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today I'm working on a scarf pattern. This is a marshmallow crochet style that you have seen me do before, and today I'm gonna to make it into a scarf. It works up really lovely, and I'm using Karen Cakes today. It's got 20% wool. You could also use the, so this is, this is from Michaels. It's a limited edition, and uh, it's Karen Cakes, and it is, um, it's gonna make one scarf with this ball of yarn here. It's got 20% wool, 80% acrylic, and there's 383 yards in it, or 350 uh, meters. And the color is lemon lime, uh, 17007. Uh, they are, are making more of this and will be um, flying in, actually. Um, I'm not sure the quantity on the Premier um, 
sweet rolls that are similar to these this kind of cake design but um, you should be able to get one out of it and you'll just stop um, a little bit short so this this pattern will work up um, with one ball of yarn it's approximately 60 inches wide um, a little over 150 centimeters you're going to use an H hook a USH or five millimeter this one's from boy um, you can use any hook it doesn't matter whatever is more comfortable for you and it's going to have this really cool striped effect and then the ends are going to look angled like this like this and so I'm going to cast on a small sample I'll show you how to start it and how to do the first few rows and then we will finish off this scarf because it's actually not done quite yet it's just going to take me a stitch longer I'm just going to show you how to fasten it off and so today I'm going to um, we're going to move this aside here and pull from the Karen let's do this center pull here All right, so get your yarn ready and we'll get started. My center pool's not working today, y'all. It's just one big mess. And it looks just plain, unfortunately. It just looks like regular green yarn. You also see this mess. Oh, it's revealing a pretty metal. Okay. <laughs> Stress gone. Love this color. This is the in-between shots that y'all don't always see. All right, making sure I have no knots. All right. Mouth is dry. Hold on. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta make sure of a, a count. 141. Okay. Okay, I've got my hook ready, I've got my yarn ready, and now I'm going to give you some direction of how you're going to cast on. You're going to chain to start it. I'm sorry, that sounded funny because I said cast on and that's totally knitting terms. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a dork. Oh, this does not look good, hold on. This is what happens behind the scenes. All right. Okay, I've got my hook and I've got my yarn and I'm going to cast on 141 stitches. The stitch um, repeat is the, the is a multiple of two plus three, so make sure that it's divisible by two and then add three. I'm going to make a sample and cast on 19. So if uh, sorry, I'm going to make a chain of 19 for my sample purposes. So if you just want to test it in a sample, then and then get into your your scarf so you're just going to want a worsted weight yarn and um, make this sample so we're going to make our slip knot i wind it around my hand my finger like this pull the back over the front and the back over the front again that's how i make my slip knot put that on and i'm going to do 19 so chain 19 wrap around chain one two and you're going to go to um 141 Keep going until you get your stitch count and I'll meet you back in a moment. Can y'all hear my washing machine in the background? I'm like self-conscious now because I can hear it. Nineteen. 
connecting. Oh, well, I did it. Okay. Okay, so we've got our stitch count. I have 19 for a sample. Again, you're going to want 141 for this shawl here. I mean, I'm sorry. You want 141 for this scarf here. If you like the scarf and you want to keep going until it ends in a total point, you can actually use this tutorial to make your shawl. Um, so you're just going to need a couple of balls of yarn. I would get three just in case. Okay, so now we're gonna start our um, our first one and we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So we've got um, one, two, three, go in here. I always lay the two, um, two chains on top of my hook. That's how I go in, not everybody's the same, that's how I do it. So now we're going to um, go pull through two and two to get our double crochet. And then we're going to skip the next two chains. So skip one, two, and then go into the third. Get that stitch on top. And we're going to single crochet. And Kristen went into the split her yarn there. So I'm going to go back in again. We're going to do a single crochet in third. Pull that through and pull that through. That's one single. Y'all, I have an alarm going off on my phone and now I have to, okay. And now we're gonna do two double in that same hole here. Pull through two, pull through two. Here's my second double. Put it in, grab our yarn. through two and two that's one textured stitch okay so this is the first row the first row is the hardest and um, once you get going it really flies I promise <laughs> I really do um, so now you want to um, keep going with this you're going to skip two and continue with the texture stitch so I'm going to uh, skip one two and go through and do a single and a double and a double Another single, so skip one, two, and go in that third one. Oh, did I do a single already? I'm sorry. Yeah, I did the single. So we're gonna do a double. Another double. And skip, and just keep going, uh, keep skipping, and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Oh goodness okay <clears throat> so I'm toward the end now it looks like I have four stitches left and I'm going to still skip two and if you if you kind of fudged and you got the wrong one this pattern is really forgiving so um, you can you, you should have one left but if you have two left that's okay like if you went too early 
earlier on in your row. Okay, so I've got my last one and I have this little doodad here, <laughs> this extra piece here. So I'm just gonna go in and we're gonna do a single crochet Make sure and get two loops on the top here or else you'll have this really weird bump. And then we're gonna pull that through, okay, and single crochet. Okay, so now I have finished row one, my foundation row. It really picks up after this. The row two on here is the thing that's gonna be repeated so much. And, um, hold on, I'm checking my notes here. Just making sure okay so row two is pretty simple We're just gonna chain up one two and turn and then we're going to do two double crochet in the first chain uh, from the hook here so down here first in the first stitch so that's one two because that first um, chaining when you before you turn, that's gonna serve as your single crochet. So it looks like one textured stitch. So you're gonna do textured stitches all the way down every time you see one of these dips here. So every time you see a dip, you're gonna go in and do a textured stitch. And then we're gonna stop one short down here. Now, for the first row, um, I actually did it on my scarf. Um, I actually went all the way to the end like I normally do just because I felt like this was just too thin of a little bump. But in hindsight, um, I'll show you what it looked like on mine. So if you forget, if you forget, this is what it's going to look like down here. So it kind of does this little tiny thing. But down on the next row, I had gone and I had moved over like this. So you can do either one. You can single crochet in the last stitch and then build it up like this, or you can stop short. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like stopping short. Oh, turn my work around. Okay, now we're gonna single crochet into this, this stitch right here. So when you pull this apart, it's this little hole right here. Double crochet two times. Single crochet. And a double. And another double. And then go ahead and keep going on yours. Uh, you've got 141, so continue until you get one stitch from the end and meet me back up. Talking to my live viewers right now, let me know if you if you think that um, I need to go slower on this stitch. Because I can do that on a, another following row. Go like super slow. If this video is too short for you and it needs to be, I'm sorry, let me say that again. If I'm showing this stitch too fast and you're not familiar, I have basics on my channel of how to make the single crochet and double crochet and do a foundation chain. So you can check out those videos and we'll have links below to a playlist on how to do that. and. The instructor is um, myself and also Michael with the Crochet Crowd, courtesy of him. And then I also have the Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket, which also teaches this stitch. The written pattern for this project will be in the description below. 
and also on my blog. I'm having trouble with this for some reason. It's catching. Okay, so I'm one stitch from the end here. It looks like I have two of the textured stitches, but this is technically the end. And so I'm going to fasten off this row by making a single crochet, not a slip stitch, but a single crochet. And um, so I'm just going to go straight in, pull through, yarn over, and pull through both. And that is the end of this row. Now I'm going to move on to another, what I call a row two. The row two is a repeatable row. So we're going to chain up one, two, and turn and complete doing it again. So again, you start off with two double crochet in the first stitch. And complete your texture stitch. You're gonna continue with this pattern until you are out of yarn, basically, and you're going to end and fasten off at the end. I'm gonna show you that one more time, and then we'll weave in the ends. Now I'm gonna show you very slowly. So if you don't know how to single crochet, I'm gonna show you very slowly. Okay, so here's my slow motion. You're going to have your chain uh, on your hook. You've got a loop. You're going to go into the stitch, Put those two top chains on here, yarn over, pull through the hole. Now you have two on your hook, yarn over again, and pull through. One, two. We're going to do a double crochet. A double crochet is you yarn over first, go through the hole, yarn over again, pull it through. You'll have two uh, loops here, and then that extra one that you pulled through, so you got three on the hook. We're gonna go yarn over again. So we have th four on the hook. We're gonna pull through the first two only, yarn over again, and pull through the last two. That's one double crochet. One more for the textured stitch. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's it. So meet me back up when you are finished and um, we will complete this project together. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my, um, my, sorry, I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm coming to the end of my scarf here, and I've got one, two, three of these textured stitches left. I'm in the middle of this last one here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull through and make one more double crochet. So I've got one more textured stitch done. If, if you're not sure, one way to count is just to kind of feel your way go, I have one, two, three. I kind of touch those knots there. And then we're gonna go down to the end, pull through and do a single crochet. And then we just um, end it. Um, I am going to pull through and finish. Um, if you if you want to have one more bump, you can go one more over and fasten it off here. I completely ran out of yarn, quite honestly, and so I would um, 
I think it's fine ending it right here, especially if you have a color change. So if your color change is um, coming early, um, then you might end it a few short. That's totally okay because I said this is a color changing yarn and you will see. So check this out. So this is the original chain. This is the starting chain here and see this real thin color of the lighter purple. It goes all the way down and by the time it comes to the end, you're coming back on itself for the foundation and see how it's thicker on this side than it is on this side. Okay, and then um, we come all the way down here and then we go back and it has more of the purple on it there than here. See how that works? But it does have this really cool rainbow effect. In some areas you can see right where it changes. Some of them it sort of looks like it just changes at the end. But overall it looks like this really cool rainbowy striped scarf. I'm going to go ahead and weave in the ends. my tapestry needle and I'm going to thread that in. You can use your crochet hook and I'm just going to go back on itself through several of these stitches. And I want to keep it in the green. And I can I can really mess with it and make it like if I'm like oh I pulled through too much like right here I just want to accentuate that you can then uh, pull it out and go back and then go around you can go through that top stitch there I like to actually go through these texture stitches kind of through this little um, through the stitch kind of weaving it through like that see how it it hides it like that so let's say you're done and you've gone through several go ahead and cut that off and we went to whoops we're gonna do the beginning this scarf is about six inches wide I think and then this one's the trickier one because um, it the color change was very short on it so I'm just going to carefully weave through here. See how that is? Because if you just start weaving up through here, you're going to notice the color. And we don't really want to see that change. It'll be kind of jarring. So I'm just going back and forth, weaving it in. And then it's good to go back on itself and get it locked in. Pull that on through and clip it. Actually, I'm going to pop that out, cut it there. And now I have a finished scarf to take with me on my trip to give away. I'm going to give this to someone on my mission trip. Well, thank you for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. I hope you enjoyed your marshmallow crochet scarf or shawl, and I hope you have a wonderful time crafting and creating. Happy crochet! Hey! <laughs> I hope you guys like that. Um, Carol says it looks lovely. How was that? Did I do okay? <laughs> Um, that is, that is nerve wracking. This yarn was splitting on me for some reason and I just kept catching it. Um, I'm winding my massive yarn barf. Did you guys see that? Oh my gosh, that was crazy. So if you're just joining me, oh, thank you, Ellie. Um, if you're just joining me, I'm doing a couple of tutorials. I'm going to do a second one now. This was for the um, scarf. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to photograph this a little bit and then I'm going to take it with me because I would really like to give it to someone there. Um, I'm going to bring, um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to bring this Karen cake. I'm going to bring, 
Actually, I think I'm going to bring a few of these Karen cakes because I can always buy more. And they did give me permission to teach someone. And I think, um, I think this one would be a really good one to teach um, up there because the the hooks are going to be pretty portable. And I think I have several of the five millimeter hooks to just give away. So I think I'm going to do that. And then. Um, Again, if you're just joining me, I'm going on this mission trip and I'm leaving early in the morning. They did give me some permission. I'm going to take some um, zippy looms and um, I'm going to work on um, teaching them at, every, at any and every opportunity. <laughs> um, but I got to figure out what else to take because the big yarn for the zippy looms is going to kind of take up a little bit of room. And oh, good gravy. Okay, there we go. It wasn't pulling apart. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Look, that's what came out of the middle of this. And it was like tragedy and on live video here. I'm going to stuff that back in there. Terrible. Terrible. It looks just good as new, right? <laughs> okay, that's that. Pardon me. This is all live. What do you think? Someone says they like someone says they like my hat. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. This is the this is the scarf, y'all. Isn't that cute? Love it. <laughs> Show them the three strand thing? Well, I don't know. That might be like kind of complicated to show all at the same time. Like remember when you were first learning you you might only want to just do e-wrap, you know, or flat knit or something. So, um, anyway, this is what it looks like all bundled up. The Karen cake is great because it has the 20% wool in it. Um, and so I think it, it handles really well. It has that little crunch to it. Mm, it's crunchy, soft. Mm, love it. Okay. I got to make me one. I love it, but I'm not, I don't love it enough not to give it away. I need to give it away. I need to give it away. Okay. Did anybody see the tutorial for the wings? These little baby wings. They make great props for babies and for dogs, apparently, for Halloween. <laughs> Someone's going to use them. They're great little memorial wings. You can um, put them on a blanket. Um, I was actually thinking that... Um, if you did them right, either the same way or whatever, but not attach them here, but attach them here in the middle, and you could crochet um, uh, like a middle part and maybe do a butterfly. Um, so maybe maybe crochet this with a really pretty variegated and do a butterfly. Wouldn't that be nice? I wish they weren't connected now, otherwise I would say, look, look what they look like. <laughs> um, or they could be elephant ears. <laughs> Actually, they kind of look like, um, maybe they look like, um, <laughs> do they look like, um, Yoda? No, they don't look like Yoda. <laughs> Are they Spock ears? <laughs> Just get, oh, see your comment above, Pam says. Oh, Pam, now I gotta scroll through. Scrolling, scrolling. Did you find this yarn splits or a lot or just some? No. Okay, so when I was working on the other one, it was not splitting. I, I think that particular Karen cake was rolled really tight in the middle. I'm not really sure why. I don't think it's like a normal thing. And then, of course, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I, I told you I was feeling nervous. I'm not really sure why I'm feeling nervous today, but it could be partially me. I'm okay with saying that. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I don't want to blame the yarn, but it was kind of squished in there pretty bad. And if you saw, I actually cut off. I cut off a little because this is what happened. The yarn was blown out. Look at that. Do you see? The plies were separated. I didn't do that. So, not sure. Joanne says the scarf variation is variation on Kristen's marshmallow. Uh, yes, thank you for the link, Joanne. Um, 
Karen needs to get crack a lacking on the new stock. It may be like, I don't know if it's on the plane yet or not, but the crochet crowd, Michael, he said, um, Ellie says that is not logical. <laughs> Spock ears. Um, oh yeah, Bridget probably jitters about tomorrow. Um, Michael Selleck with the crochet crowd. He says he's got a little bat phone, a red bat phone ready. And when spin right calls him and says, Hey, you know, we're, we're sending Karen cakes to Mark Michaels now. Cause they apparently got a cargo plane and are going to be like packing it up and then putting it in there. So I really don't know how long that's going to take. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that process. So you can go bug him about it. <laughs> No, don't, don't bug him about it. He doesn't know. I should not have said that, y'all. Ah. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do another tutorial because I have some time. So let me get it set up. Sorry. I'm hitting everything. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just apologizing all over the place. Trying to figure out how to show this um, to you. This is not the normal way that I do this. So, I may do an overall picture and change up the beginning or the end next time and show like what it looks like when it's all finished. So, for now, it's going to work a little different. Um, I have a question. I have a question. Oh no, I can't do that. Never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to ask that question. Bridget says, then fly above all our homes and drop little care packages of Karen cakes. <laughs> Joanne says, I'll be okay until Michaels can restock because you have access to sweet rolls. Yeah. Okay. So Joanne, do you really have access to sweet rolls? Like, are you near an AC more or something? Because I just went by Joanne Fabrics and they did not have the sweet rolls out. Um, I had called them and they had said, oh, they're probably on our truck and we're supposed to get them out by October sometime. And I'm going, it's October, y'all. It's the 13th. You better get moving. So I actually went to a different location yesterday and looked for it and it was not there. Yeah. So that was not awesome. But I did end up buying some books. So I guess I can't, I can't be too unhappy, right? Um, okay, so I'm getting back into my notes on my iPad and my phone. I got the pattern on one, a reminder on another. All right, so we're going to do the cloud. Oh, you want to shop for me, Ellie? Hmm, that's probably dangerous. We should talk. Carol says, hey, everyone, isn't it great watching the live tutorials? <laughs> we get to see the live tutorial before it's posted to YouTube. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> okay. I need to get busy, so I'm going to stop chatting. Okay. What did she say up there? Carol said, you need to make another one. Ruffle diaper cover with them. Okay. Okay. I need to stop looking. All right. Do I have stuff? Oh, maybe that's, there's a gray hair in there. It was like doing this weird thing. Okay. All right. I'm ready. I think. Okay. I think. Okay. Oh, I already did the intro. Okay.
I'm going to show this. Okay. There's an airplane. Sorry, hang on. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are going to make a super soft and squishy cloud. Oh my gosh, can you feel how thick this is? Oh my word. Okay, so it has this really cool pillowy edge here. It's super squishy and soft. It is made with the Bernat Blanket Big Yarn. And this is the, the white color. This is a um, vintage, it's, it's called vintage. Um, in the Bernat Baby Blanket Yarn, it's called vintage white. So it matches that. And then I'm, I've got it worked up here in the country blue color, which is color 26016. And um, you can also get um, other big yarn like this. Um, this is a jumbo size seven. Um, and it comes with, um, the balls are 300 gram balls or 10 and a half ounces. They're 32 yards. There's other balls of other brands with 28 yards. Uh, this is gonna take you about, um, I would get three balls just in case. And um, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna need that big jumbo yarn. You're gonna need about three balls and then a US 50 or 25 millimeter hook. It is also called a U. I'm using a Tunisian hook, and when you use a Tunisian hook, it goes by the knitting um, measurements here, but if you're getting a crochet hook, it's the same thing without this little end, and it would be a letter U in the US, but it's also 25 millimeter. Okay, so we're gonna work on this, and then also, if you haven't seen, we've got these crochet wings, and so, I made the wings so that if you do a little baby prop, you can put a baby on it and then lay them on a little naked baby and the little bottom out and put these little wings on them. Um, or you can um, use this for other purposes, but these little wings are really kind of sweet. Um, you could do them in the white and do this little blue gray um, deal here or do, um, do a white and then maybe do this color here. So make whatever color you want. This is the baby blanket yarn and then this is the big baby blanket yarn. All right, let's get started. <coughs> Let me get my water, hold on. Get, to get started, I'm going to take the wrapper off of my ball because working with this yarn, I have found that I take the wrapper off and kind of squish it up and then start using it, pulling it from the outside. That works best for me. And then I can just lay this on the floor or in a big bowl. If you want to make a sample for yourself that's smaller, you can use the baby blanket yarn and use a J hook and cast on 19 stitches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops. Sorry, hold on, y'all. I've got some conflicting notes here. Stop it. My phone is acting weird. Okay, I've got my hook, I've got my big yarn, and I'm going to make my slip knot. Okay, that's a really big slip knot, y'all. All right, 
And then again, if you want to do the night, you want to chain 19 for a sample on a baby blanket yarn. But for this one, we're going to do 43 stitches of 43 chains. So I'm going to do one. And you may find on this first chain that you have to use your fingers. I find that this hook doesn't pull it through quite as buttery nice uh, with this yarn just because it's so big, but it does start working um, better later. So that's three. Did I do three? Hold on, let me start this over y'all. Cause see, I talked and I lost count. Let me just start over. <clears throat> see, this is what happens when we do live tutorials. Okay, I've got my hook and my yarn and I'm gonna cast on, sorry, see it, do it again. I got my yarn, my number seven, and my hook, which is 25 millimeters. We're gonna make a slip knot and chain. If you're doing a sample on the baby blanket yarn, then you're gonna want a J hook and work with 19 chains to start. Make sure and keep this generous and loose. And we're going to chain 43. Keep going and I'll meet you back at the end. So I've, I've made my sample just a little shorter, but you're gonna need 43, and again, it's three balls. Uh, now we want to do is go into the uh, third chain from the hook. One, two, three. This is on row one. Okay. And I'm gonna yarn over and go in. Make sure that there's two loops on top here and then pull through, yarn over again, pull through one, two, yarn over again, pull through one, two. Yes, it is super loose. You did it right. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna skip the next two chains. This is the only one like this. this, is the only row where you only do the one there, okay? So we're gonna skip again and I like to kind of feel along. So once I've made this big old loop here, I find the next bottom big loop and I go, okay, that's one, two, and then I go on to three. And I'm gonna go in and pull out one. We're gonna be a single crochet. Pull one, pull through both of those, yarn over. Go through, pull through another, yarn over. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's one double crochet. Let's do another one. Yarn over, go through that same hole, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so what we've done is we have in that skipped we skipped those chains and then came over and went through one single and two double. And you can feel that there's one, two, three stitches here. Now we're gonna move on, <clears throat> I'm gonna skip down. You have a multiple, by the way, you can change sizes on this. So your multiple is two plus three. So make your number divisible by two and then add three. So I just went into this hole here. So I'm gonna kind of feel along and this big giant yarn is kind of hard. Um, the first the first row is always the hardest. So we're gonna go one, two, three. This is like kind of hard to feel. Okay, no, I'm sorry. See, and that's part of that one. So this is the one here. So we're gonna go one, two, and then we're going into the third from the hook. See how hard that was? So once you get this first row down, I promise when you when you do the next one, it's going to be so much easier because it's very clear where you go. 
And we did the single crochet and we're pulling through a double into that same hole. Make sure that your foundation row doesn't get twisted up. Make sure it's always at the bottom. Pull through one, two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, that's a, that's a single and a double. One more, yarn over, go through, pull through one. Make sure this is on the bottom. Through one, two, and one, two. Okay, there it is. That's your textured stitch. Now we have this little area here left. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, go into this last hole, make sure that this little stitch, so it looks like three big loops. You're like, which one is it? Well, it's this lower really loose one, and then these two are gonna be on top, and your little snip, slip knot is at the end. So we're gonna go straight through and do one single crochet. Pull through, yarn over, and pull through one here like that, okay? So it is gonna be a loose end, and this will end up working out <clears throat> towards the end. Okay, so now we're gonna do row two. Row two is very, um, very simple. Once you get going on this crochet, it seems really difficult, but I'm telling you, once it starts going, it, it actually really flies, and it works up really fast. I mean, this is like three or four inches right here. That's huge. I mean, look at my hand. So we're gonna chain up. This is row two, chain one, two. This serves as a single crochet. We're going to turn it around and do a double crochet into this first hole right here. Double crochet, and again, yarn over. See, once I have this foundation row, it acts as this rigid bottom that <laughs> kind of holds everything down once you've got it going. Okay, now we're gonna skip over to this next hole way over here. You're skipping two chains that are on the top, but you can see this hole is very clear. So we want to single crochet, yarn over, pull through, do the double, yarn over, that's one double, and one more double. So we got single, double, double. Again, if you want to count them with your fingers after you're done to make sure you have enough. So we've got one, two, three. Look how huge that is, right? So now we're coming to the end. We've got one, two of these texture stitches waiting for us. All we're gonna do is continue to just come to the end, leave this big one hanging, pull through, and single crochet one time. That's it, no more double crochets. We are done with this row two. That's all you do. When you decide you wanna finish, basically, you just stop where you stop. If you get the cloud how you want it, then you're done. I'm gonna chain up one, two, and turn for the next row. And if this was the end of this cloud, I would just go ahead and do one texture stitch and then I would fasten it off here. Now, I only did this very short just for this tutorial here. I'm gonna show you the big cloud and where I fasten that off. So I'm gonna switch up and we'll meet you in a moment. Keep going. I have to... Um, and put my cup down here. <laughs> this is so big. It's, you have no idea what this looks like in my lap. Okay. Let's see how many I've got. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I am almost done. I have worked ten rows. If you're not really sure, you can actually kind of use your hands to count it. So this is eight nine, 10. I have all these rows here and they are gradually decreasing here. See how this makes this really cool bump here. Okay. 
And then I've got this, this row here that I'm finishing up, okay? And I've got two left, and all we're gonna do is come down here, pull our yarn through, and we're going to single crochet. You can also do a slip knot. Um, I actually like to give it just a little bit of oomph here, just a little bit of building, because that single crochet just kind of builds it up just a little bit so it's not like so violently stopping. It kind of has a little bit of a straight point here. And then all I do is I'm gonna break my yarn. You can use scissors, but this pops off very nicely if you're not strong enough. I mean, it is pretty strong on the big yarn. So um, you can also use scissors. And then just pull that on out. And then you're just gonna wanna weave it in. And actually, I just weave it in with my hands. Um, it's just so big that it's, it would kind of be hilarious to try and use a needle or even the crochet hook. And so I just continue to work this down and get, get it where I want it, fastened off. And then I go ahead and cut it. And now it is all done. Well, thank you so much for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. I'm so glad that you joined today for this cloud baby mat and prop tutorial. Again, you can make the baby crochet uh, angel wings here in different colors. This would be kind of superhero-ish. Um, you could even make them um, as a little butterfly, whatever you wanna do. Uh, the clouds can be made on the smaller blanket yarn and um, maybe even put on a blanket and have lots of little clouds hanging around and little angel wings. So just use your creativity. You are a creative person. You were created to be creative. So I hope you have a great day and happy crochet. Bye-bye. Hello. I hope you like that. You were created to be creative. You were. Don't tell me you're not creative. Don't tell me that. I will not hear it. <laughs> We're all creative in our own way, aren't we? All right, you wanna see this cloud? It's really big. The yarn is acrylic. It kinda looks like cotton, but it is acrylic. And so you would probably wanna hand wash anything that happened on it. <laughs> Look at this. I'm just a little black rain cloud hovering neath the honey tree. Only a little black rain cloud. Nobody's bothering me. Hi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a good feeling. Da -da 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 -da. I'm trying to get Daniel the Tiger song. Da -da -da -da. On a happy new day, ding ding, or <laughs> Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I'm trying to remember what that one is, that song. Anyway, you like the creative line? Maybe I should just start doing that. <laughs> Good night, kisses will keep you in stitches. Boy, howdy. <laughs> um, you guys, I could do one more tutorial. I could go ahead and film the um, super cowl, okay. So I've got the super um, crochet baby blanket. I have the cowl and I have the basket. So I actually have three more to do. Would you believe I could have carried it this far? Don't ask me to do a hat. I'm not doing a hat <laughs> in the big yarn. That would be ridiculous. So yeah. You want me to show the cowl, Bridget? You want to see the cowl? La, la, la. Um, which color should I do? I've got the blue really handy right now. You want me to do the blue? Oh, basket? I'm not ready for the basket. The basket's actually a much longer tutorial, so what time are we? Yeah, it's going to be too late for that. I could do the cowl. I would have to do it in blue. Do you think I should do it in blue? Otherwise, I'm going to have to get up and go get the other. I could do it in this white, but I'm not sure... Oh, I could switch my background and have the dark. Do you want to see the cowl in, in white? 
Would that be sweet? Beautiful. You want the cowl in white, don't you? Yes, you do. You want the cowl in white? Who would, who would be a happy camper with a white cowl? Yeah? Um, here's the super crochet baby blanket. <laughs> okay, we have some white. Yes, yes, show me. Show me the money. Sorry, I'm like a movie line girl today on TV. Okay, prepping. That's going on the floor. That's going on the floor. Got my hook. Got my yarn. I need to get my background. Pardon me. Bridget. Ooh, sorry. Totally hit that, didn't I? Bridget wants her cowl. She shall have it. He is my squishy. He is my friend. Call him squishy. So big and fluffy. I can see someone making an elephant out of this yarn. I am not an amaguri person. Like, I don't make them a bunch, but I love and appreciate them. And I can totally see someone making like a giant, it would be very expensive, big old squishy elephant. Wouldn't that be fun? Or like a bear or something? Mm-hmm. You're welcome, Bridget. Love you. All right. So, baby blanket yarn. Big blanket yarn. Boy, I can't talk. All right. The cowl. The cowl. I need my directions for the cowl. <clears throat> you guys are helping me believe it or not. Okay. Super crochet cowl. Should we, what should we call it? Super crochet cowl? I don't think we need to call it marshmallow. Super cowl. Should it be super cowl? Crochet? Or should it be super cowl? I mean, super crochet cowl. Anyone? Bueller. All right, I'm going to start, I think. All right, trying to get everything ready, sorry. I don't have my other, I don't have my, I was gonna show you my cowl, but I can't. <laughs> jo Joanne says my daughter's watching me and wants her own cloud wings and now elephant. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Crochet a super cowl. How's that? Crochet a super cowl. Super cowl of fragilistic expialidocious. I promise there is only water in my water. <laughs> this is one of my um, cups from like one of the babies. I don't know. I think it was from my last baby. My third. My little man. My little man. Okay. All right. Let me flip a Rooney. Yeah, okay, sorry, I was trying to decide if I want to introduce it, but I think I'll introduce it when I have the cowl on my body. All right. Okay. Have more light that way.
getting my notes. Y'all know the drill. Okay. To make your super cowl, you are going to need a hook. I am using a Tunisian hook today, but you can also use a regular crochet needle, uh, crochet hook, I'm sorry. It is a US 50 or 25 millimeter, or it would say a US U hook. This is Tunisian, so of course it's gonna write it like a, like a knitting hook would be, um, so it says 50. And, uh, but otherwise it's 25 millimeter. You're gonna want some jumbo yarn. This is Bernat Blanket Big yarn. You can also get it in other stores. This one actually has more on it. This is 32 yards. Um, I've seen some other ones that look just like this in the vintage kind of white here. And it is only 28. So I like this bigger ball. If you use this one, I know that you can use one ball. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna take off the packaging here. And the best way to work with this is to take your yarn and squish it, make a ball. And then we want to pull out the tail here. Okay, I'm not gonna center pull with this yarn. Forget about it, forget about it. Just don't worry about it. You're just gonna pull from the outside. So I'm going to take it and throw it away over there. Y'all. My lawn guy is here. I am thankful. I am thankful. Let's talk to Christine. Hi, Christine. How are you? Congratulations. She was one of the winners from yesterday. Woohoo! <laughs> He's going to be right up next to the window here in a second. I'm telling you. They mow it really fast. There's like actually several guys. And can you hear it now? She wore a raspberry beret, the kind you find at a second-hand store. Raspberry beret, if it was warm, she wouldn't wear much more. Raspberry beret, the kind you find at a second-hand store. I pick or forget all the rest of the words. But I am vamping, so I'll sing my song. The guy is mowing the lawn. It's too loud to record this tutorial. <laughs> you know, it's Texas. We still are mowing lawns. How about you? Where are you? Do you still mow your lawn at this time of year? It is October 13th. <laughs> And we have grass that's still growing. <laughs> hmm. I mean, seriously, you know, it would be nice if I had planned what I was going to say. Oh, New Jersey, you're raking leaves. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> you don't hear it, Ada? You don't hear it at all? Well, they're they're kind of back and forth. There's like a, there's, I think there's like four guys and there's two in the front and two in the back. So they actually like work really fast. Um, see, it's getting louder. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear that. We don't have lawns, it's just concrete jungle. Let, oh really? Oh. <laughs> Ada can't hear it because she's in Puerto Rico. You deserve the song I'm going to sing next. Did you ever see West Side Story? Puerto Rico. Excuse me, this is a song. I don't actually think it's ugly. You ugly island, island of tropic diseases. 
Always the hurricane blowing, always the population growing. I like the island Manhattan. Smock up your poppin, fuck cotton. I forget what the word is. I like to be in America. Everything free in America. For a small fee in America. Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. Or whatever the rest was. <laughs> I like the city of San Juan. I know a boat you can get on. <laughs> uh, okay, he's almost done. West Side Story, when you reject, you reject from your first cigarette to your last dying day. But uh, I don't smoke, I, actually. I am allergic. Oh my gosh. He is still going. Like, how much, how many weeds can a person have? Ada laughed in Spanish. <laughs> oh my God. A laugh is a laugh. What? You don't need a translator. Except when you write it, and then in Spanish it's like J-E-J-E -E or J-A-J-A, because -A, they don't say their J's like we do, and they say ha. So it looks like ha 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 to them, but it looks like J-J-J-J-J to us. I'm like, that just takes too long. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm really sorry, honestly. I I could be, like, done by now. Like, this is like a complete vamp. <laughs> like, I hope my video isn't too long where I can't, like, save it and download it. Oh my gosh, can you stop cutting already? Yes, I need a soundproof studio. Someone said that earlier. That's one of the things I want to do if and when we move. I would love to close this studio in behind me. This is an open living room. Nobody uses a formal living room anymore, do they? I mean, unless you're fancy schmancy. I'm not fancy schmancy. Um, so I'm sitting in my dining room, just so you know what I'm doing. I'm sitting in my dining room, and then it looks into the front living room, and then I actually have a den over there, like where everybody, you know, actually does stuff. So this is extra Kristen time. You get random Kristen right now I am like entertaining you let me entertain you let me make you smile this is called edutainment today we are educating and entertaining okay I see him walking back to his truck hi Roger get out of here don't cut my roses oh my goodness okay I can I catch a beef with y'all Roger. Roger was told by my husband to trim our our stuff in the front, right? Put in new mulch, weed, and trim. You know what he did? He cut my roses. He left two roses. Yeah, he's blowing everything out now. Brrrr. Roger cut my roses, y'all. I was very mad. You know why? Because, yeah, leaf blower time, Mark says. <laughs> Roger cut my roses. That was for one of my daughters who has anxiety, and she loves flowers. And we planted that just for her so we could have some that we cut and, like, bring into the house and have for her. And she can enjoy that. She gets to cut them, and it's totally for her. And he stinking cut them off. It made me mad. Like, why would you cut my flowers off? Well, your husband said to trim it. That was not okay. That's not what he meant. Trim the bushes. That's a rose bush. Oy vey. I'm sorry. Y'all don't usually see me getting mad at someone. This is life. Whoa, baby, there's 250 comments so far. Facebook says, this is my most commented on live video. 
that's because it's stinking long. It's like 10 o'clock now, and I think I started at 840. If it wasn't for Roger and his team. Roger, Roger, what's your vector, Victor? Oh, ooh, 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 he left, ooh. <laughs> Hubby, no longer in charge of talking to Roger. Yeah, I called Roger, I was like, what? What did you do? <laughs> it was like talking to my dog. What did you do? <laughs> no, I, I not like talking to my dog. I was I was much nicer, but he didn't get it. He was like, I don't understand the problem. I was like, well, the mulch was a mess. It was all over the place. It was even on top of the like these flat brick things that we have. Like, didn't bother. And I had I went out there and I like slept swept them all in there. And y'all, I am not OCD. Like seriously. So I'm thinking some other person would have really flipped out. So anyway, la la la. Um, okay, are we ready? I love all the. I'm so glad you're laughing. I love it. I love it. Cause otherwise, this would be really boring, right? Yeah, trimming and cutting are two different things. Let says. Yep, you're right. You are right. I don't even remember where I was in the tutorial. I think I'm just gonna have to start that part again. So sorry, y'all. But now we know, and knowing's half the battle. GI Joe. Okay, um, cast on, I mean, chain, shut the front door, where is it? 23. Show it, please. Action, ladies. All right. Okay. I've got my yarn and my hook ready. I'm going to make a slip knot. Make sure it's nice and big to put that 25 millimeter hook right through that. And we are going to chain 23. So chain 23 and pause your video and meet me back in a minute. If you're just joining me from Dakota, I saw you. Welcome. I am making a live tutorial right now and I'm just getting ready to go again after they paused. <laughs> Figuratively speaking, no one's there just yet. And we are going to start this. Okay, so we've done our foundation chain and now we're going to do our foundation row, which is row one. This pattern only has two rows for the super cowl. Isn't that fantastic? Yes, it is. So we are going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. Go in. Make sure you've got the two little chains on top. Pull through. Wrap around. I'm going to pull through two and wrap around and pull through two. That is one double crochet. 
This is the beginning of row one. It looks different from the beginning of row two. We're going to skip three chains or go into the third chain. So skip two, one, two, and then we go into this chain here. We're going to go straight in. This is a single crochet, so pull through, wrap around, and pull through one, two, wrap around, and we're gonna go in that same hole, double crochet. We're gonna do two double crochets, so pull through two, and two, and do it one more time. This is just like the Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket. If you need a slower tutorial, please refer to that one or some of the other um, basics tutorials on the channel. Now we're going to skip two more and continue with this textured stitch. So what you just do a single, uh, which we just did is a single and a double double, and that is the texture stitch. And see how big it is? It's like as big as the palm of my hand on this particular one. It works up really fast. The foundation row is always the slowest. So we've got one, and you're gonna feel along and skip two. One, two, and then go into the third. So we're gonna go straight in, again, putting the two um, chains on top, pull through, wrap around, oops, go through that again, pull through, wrap around, and get your single, and then go in, do a double. Okay, and then do one more. And if you're not sure, I just kind of feel the stitches, especially when they're huge like this, they're really easy to feel. So if you are a beginner, this is probably a good one, although the size of the needle might totally overwhelm you. <laughs> if you've got one of friends to borrow, that'd be good too. But anyway, I'm gonna go through and count the stitches. So I see my single, which is shorter, and then a double and another double. Now on this yarn, if you're messy and you're a beginner, this is awesome because it's in your favor because this, the messier this looks, the better because it has this really pillowy look when it comes out. All right, so you're gonna continue skipping two chains, feel your way around because this, this big yarn is kind of hard to, to feel those stitches here. So make sure that you're grabbing. So we've got one, see I can feel the two chains. See how this was kind of trapped? This is actually the chain for the top. So I've got one and two, okay? And then I go to the third one, okay? And then make sure this isn't twisting around on you. So if you need to relay it down, so we've got one, two, and then this is the third one. Go straight in. So I'll meet you back at the end uh, when you've got like say three chains left. Pause your video, meet you in a minute. I feel like I have too much there, but it's probably fine. I probably had a, a really big, big chain on one of those that made it look inconsistent. What is that? That was inside the yarn. <clears throat> this is what happens when you don't put the ball in a bowl. I didn't, I didn't put a bowl over here. I normally would do that, but for some reason I did not bring Big Bertha over here, which is my big giant yarn bowl. Uh, bowl yarn bowl. All right, now that I've got lots, let's move her back. Our yarn is a she today. <laughs> okay, so I've got one, two, three. Oh, goodness gracious, what's going on? I'm trying to be careful not to twist it. If 
you're hearing all this scraping, it's my vinyl table cover. This is not the, the top of my table, it's a vinyl protector. sure if I have skipped too many on here or what because let's see one two one two one two you know what I I did I did not I went in the wrong one It's hard to do in this yarn a uh, frogging. That's it takes some finesse here. What I'm doing is I'm marking where I need to be <clears throat> with one hand. Except I just lost it. Okay, so one, two, no, that's part of that. So one, two. Seriously? thinking I hit the wrong one. Alright. Did the broadcast kick you out? I just noticed Lori said something about it. I, I can't kick anybody out, so... Well, I mean, I can, technically. Wow, okay, this is what happened when I frogged. Y'all, look at this. Look, look, look how big, look how big that is. I'm sorry, I'm completely being, like, botching this up today. Let me fix my stuff here. That's what it is, I got twisted. Okay, now I understand. One, two, three. See, this is what happens when it gets twisted. Sorry, this is actually a very easy pattern, but for whatever reason, I let myself get twisted up. Someone said I made it look easy, but the thing is, is, you know, I make mistakes too. And I just, you just saw me try and figure out what I did and then go back. And then I figured out what it was. I knew there was something wrong, but I wasn't really sure what it was. But it was the fact that it got all twisted. Okay. And then we've got one, two... Okay, so I'm at the end and I've got these last couple of stitches here. I'm going to go all the way to this last stitch because uh, I don't have enough room to put another textured stitch on. So I'm going to go into the last stitch. It's right, right about where my slip knot is and uh, there is a loose 
stitch here and then I can fit right in and with my two on the top and then we're gonna pull through okay and then do a single okay and then before you go on I would suggest going ahead and taking your yarn and kind of pulling it because this yarn can get kind of caught up on itself and go ahead and elongate that okay and get ready for the next stitches because it'll bunch up on the next row and this is gonna be a cowl so you want to make sure it fits around your neck nice so want to do chain two to start row two this is the last row and turn double crochet into this first hole here this this first big stitch at the bottom of that chain and then we're going to do one more double crochet in that same stitch it's much easier this row now you're going to zoom over where you see how these little pillowy things kind of fall downward like this so it's actually got two chains on the top that you're skipping and you're going to go in this hole right here single crochet double double that's your texture stitch pull out some more yarn double crochet double crochet double crochet so single double double move to the next one go in that hole single double double going in pulling it out wrapping over turn pull it out and turn if you notice I'm go I wrap and I go through the stitches while I'm turning and then I come back out and I turn again so we got one two three go in the next one single And this is what it would look like if you did the um, super marshmallow crochet baby prop, the cloud. So the super cloud mat. This would be what it looked like in the white. Or vintage color, that's what they're calling it. It's not really an off white, but it's not super white either I should say it's not a cream it is slightly off-white keep going okay. gotta get some more yarn Another one, going all the way to the end on this. Another double. Okay. And you can go on to create an, an entire blanket out of this. Honestly, you could, and you would just make it as long as you want. This happens to be the cowl. If you wanted it longer, you uh, need multiples of two plus three, so an even number plus three. This one was 23, so it's a 20 is your multiple of two plus the three, and then um, <clears throat> you make that as wide as you want, and then continue with row two until the very end and then you fasten it off how I'm gonna fasten it off here this is how you fasten off the row and then you would chain up and start row two if you continued but on the cowl we're just doing two rows so I'm gonna find this this end here and I'm going to um, go right into uh, this stitch here and um, single crochet okay all right so now I have the single crochet it's this straight flat and then I have this straight flat edge here. So see how this is round? And then I'm going, I'm going to do is attach it. 
So I'm gonna pull out plenty of yarn here so that I can use it to sew with. I'm gonna break, uh, break that yarn. See, that's pretty strong on that one, so I might need some scissors when I cut this next one. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the sides together that I want um, to sew and um, really just use my tail and weave it through. And I'm just using my fingers. And um, I would suggest that going for the first one, um, going ahead and making a knot, pulling it through. Okay, pull it through kind of tight like that. And uh, I'm gonna make a knot here on this other side. I just, I just want to make sure it's like super secure. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. In fact, whoa, I just see, I just broke my yarn. That's awesome. See how it breaks. Um, I was going to say, actually, this would be kind of a cool cover. And if you just um, uh, did it like that, you can maybe do like a button sort of cowl here. And, um, and fasten that off, make it just look like a button. I wouldn't actually make it to where you could button it unless you sold one and then it, the button is massive and you put it through here and then it just fits like that, okay? But let's sew it together and don't do what Kristen did. Don't pull it so hard. I'm gonna use this other tail. So I was trying to pull too hard and do my knot, but you don't really have to do that. Last time I did, and it worked better on the last color, because I actually did it the teal color. And it looks really nice. And then I'm just going to flip it around. And then you have this cowl. <clears throat> okay, so now it has this pillowy edge on the bottom and then it has a straighter sort of look at the top. And I'm gonna punch out all my little pillows, these little marshmallow things to kind of stick outward and just kind of mess with it. And then I, when I put it on, I make sure that the um, that the edge that has the um, the more pillowy side is down on my neck and then um, up towards my head is gonna be the flatter part. So I'm going to put this on and show you. Well, here is my cowl. I hope you enjoy it. It is nice and super comfy for the winter and keeping out the cold. Um, this is not gonna be a cowl that you can fit into your pocket, but it is certainly gonna be good on a blustery day in Chicago, I betcha. <laughs> but it is really, it's really cool and funky. You can wear this on a night out or whatever. You can hide your face at a football game. <laughs> So it's really fun. I hope you enjoy making one. Make your super cowl too. Be sure and post pictures of you and your cowl or whoever you gave it to on the Good Knit Kisses Facebook page. I love to see them. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day and happy crochet. Bye-bye. Hey everyone. Did you like that? Do I look like a snow bunny, Mark? <laughs> I'm glad you like it. So yeah, it's nice and snug. It's a very snug cowl. And if you knit, uh, if you crochet even looser, it will hang down just a little bit more. Um, you could kind of tug on this to make it, make it more, um, more loose. Um, I, you know, you could probably chain more. The thing is, is because it doesn't hang well, um, you know, it's kind of hard to say, oh, I'm going to do one that's like this. And it kind of lays over sideways because truly, I, I think it would just be this extra thing to sort of get in your way, like if you're writing something. 
<laughs> it would probably obstruct your vision, <laughs> but it's pretty big. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a big girl, so I it might like be like super bulky. I mean, super big on somebody, but I think it's kind of cool because I can feel the warmth in here. Like, and even though it has holes in it and stuff, it it is warm. So, um, you know, but it kind of it kind of can move with you. It'd be good with you know with the jacket and everything. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the tutorial today. Thank you for your patience with my lawn mowing guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was just entertaining you through it all. So what do y'all think about this um, this big old hook here? What do you think? Are you going to try it? Um, you could also do this with uh, t-shirt yarn. That would be fun. And that would be very washable. Yeah. Uh, if you make it with a t-shirt yarn, depending upon the weight, um, you might dial up or down your your hook, um, I would just make your chain and kind of put it around you and see where you want it to fall and then give it a few more inches just because um, it can kind of draw up a little bit. And then um, I would, um, you might have to add a third row. The third row is still gonna be a repeated row too. So anyway, I'm gonna do the beginning of the video now just to kind of chat about it for a second. So if y'all don't mind, I'm going to do a little, real quick little shout out like I'm beginning the video. Is that cool? All right. And then I'm going to wrap up today. Ah, la, 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 la. Okay. Hey, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. And today we are working on a super cowl. And you can make it in crochet. And you're going to use a really big needle. <laughs> and you're going to use really big yarn or you can cut up scraps of t-shirt and make one with t-shirt yarn so you uh, are going to have a tutorial here so if you'll join me in a second i'll show you everything that you need to make what i'm wearing right now all right so thank you guys for watching and um next week i'll probably work on the um the big striped version of the blanket and then i need to finish working out the whole basket thing so those might be two separate tutorials i don't know we'll see so i kind of hate to bring it on my trip i will not be here tomorrow i may or may not like show out a picture if i did a live video it might be just for a second to say hi in the morning but i won't be on regular schedule for tomorrow but i will be back on monday hope you have a great day bye everyone